Welcome to the Satoshi Suspects, a series where we profile the most likely candidates behind the mysterious Bitcoin creator, Satoshi Nakamoto. In each short episode, we take a look at an individual who either could be Satoshi themselves or could have contributed to Bitcoin if Satoshi Nakamoto is in fact a group and not simply one person. This episode will focus on Nick Sabo, one of the earliest cypherpunks and a pioneer in the field of digital currencies. Now, if you've never heard of Nick Sabo, you're in for a treat. He is a computer scientist, legal scholar and cryptographer who has been active in the field of digital currency since the early 1990s. He earned his computer science degree from the University of Washington and his legal doctorate from the George Washington University Law School. Now, Sabo is a very private and reserved person. Tim Ferriss titled him the quiet master of crypto. So most available information on Sabo is third party, apart from interviews which he has given. One thing is clear though, Sabo is highly intelligent and has a lifelong obsession with cryptocurrency which stretches back decades before Bitcoin appeared in 2008. He is actually credited with coming up with the term smart contracts, which he wrote about back in 1994. He elaborated on them two years later in 1996 as a quote, set of promises specified in digital form, including protocols within which the parties can perform on these promises. Even back in the 1990s, Sabo talked of a decentralized marketplace built on top of these smart contracts where transactions can happen without an intermediary. Does that sound familiar to you? Well, somewhat ironically, despite many citing this as evidence that he could be Satoshi, these digital marketplace descriptions in the early 90s are more aligned with Ethereum today than Bitcoin, but more on that later. Sabo published a white paper in 1997 titled The God Protocols, the opening of which reads like a philosophical description of what Bitcoin aims to achieve. Imagine the ideal protocol. It would have the most trustworthy third party imaginable, a deity who is on everybody's side. All the parties would send their inputs to God. God would reliably determine the results and return the outputs. God being the ultimate in confessional discretion, no party would learn learn anything more about the other party's inputs than they could learn from their own inputs and the output. If you strip out the theology, he is essentially describing a decentralized anonymous blockchain. He even writes later in the God Protocols about running a spreadsheet across the internet. I have left a link in the description below to the God Protocols by Nick Sabo. Interestingly, he cites our first Satoshi suspect and inventor of cryptocurrency David Chom in the paper. I have linked that episode below too. It appears that in writing the God Protocols, Sabo reverse engineered his smart contract propositions and deeply understood that the protocol underlying them would have to be impenetrable and immutable for them to fulfill their desired promises. Now you may be thinking that while the smart contract descriptions and God protocols hint at Sabo refining the idea that could have one day become Bitcoin, they aren't exactly concrete evidence. Well, in 1998, we got the closest thing to concrete evidence in this search for Satoshi when Nick Sabo published his white paper on BitGold. Gold, apart from sharing three of the seven letters of Bitcoin, is all almost an early Bitcoin version and was described as a direct precursor to the Bitcoin architecture. Bitgold is a trustless, anonymous, mineable digital currency using proof of work. Hal Finney is explicitly mentioned, by the way, with a hard supply cap that runs on what he called a bit string, which is the same idea as a blockchain. The similarities between Bitcoin and Bitgold are almost eerie. What is remarkable is how he predicted certain Bitcoin issues and attributes of Bitcoin when describing Bitgold. When discussing Bitgold mining and Bitgold miners, he foresaw how access to computing power would give some miners an advantage over others, as whoever, quote, invents and deploys an optimized computer architecture would earn a very substantial profit. He also discusses the inflation problem of fiat currency and the portability issues of precious metals, both of which would be solved by Bitgold and were solved by Bitcoin. So what happened to Bitgold? Well, Sabo never launched it, but in 2008, the same year that Bitcoin white paper was released, he commented on his blog post that he intended to launch a, quote, live version of his currency. Now, I am not alone in thinking Nick Sabo is Satoshi Nakamoto based on his work. Elon Musk has said it too. On an episode of the Lex Friedman podcast, Musk says that if you look at the evolution of the ideas that precede Bitcoin, Nick Sabo is the one most responsible for those ideas and their evolution. Several credible independent journalists who have looked into the Nakamoto mystery have also landed on Nick Sabo. New York Times journalist Nathaniel Popper wrote in 2015 that the most convincing evidence pointed to a reclusive American man of Hungarian descent named Nick Sabo. British journalist Dominic Frisby outed Sabo as Satoshi in 2014. Sabo then emailed Frisby writing, I'm afraid you got it wrong doxing me as Satoshi. Well, I'm used to it. So he denies it, no surprise. But is there a counter argument that could disprove his possible Satoshi identity? Earlier I mentioned that his early smart contract writings are more aligned with Ethereum than Bitcoin. Well, Sabo seems to be more of a fan of ETH than Bitcoin, at least publicly. He told Business Insider magazine that quote, Ethereum has vast potential, whereas Bitcoin won't ever do do 
anything well beyond implementing a currency. That seems quite a harsh viewpoint if Bitcoin was his creation. But at the same time, his restricted view on Bitcoin versus Ethereum is in line with what he hoped Bitgold would one day be. So, is Nick Sabo Satoshi Nakamoto? It seems likely. As Elon stated, he is the most responsible for the evolution of the ideas that underpin Bitcoin. Others contributed, of course, and Sabo references them in his writing, namely Hal Finney and David Chom. Yes, there is no hardcore evidence. But if he isn't, what is the alternative? That someone watched and studied Sabo's writing and idea evolution anonymously and implemented these ideas into Bitcoin? That isn't too far-fetched, as Sabo was a cypherpunk and anonymous online activity is a core behavior of that group. If Sabo is not Bitcoin's creator, he is Bitcoin's architect. He explored, grew, and laid down the framework for the currency, particularly with his Bitgold proposal. He built the foundations upon which Satoshi built the cryptographic house. Whoever Satoshi is, be it a group or individual, Nick Sabo was either directly or indirectly involved via his ideas and writings. He is a true pioneer in the field and his work has paved the way for many of the innovations that we see in the cryptocurrency industry today.